In this video, we're going to highlight some new drift reporting features in Adapt Builder, specifically linked to creation of an XLS file in Excel. And we're going to use a multi-story moment frame to illustrate this new feature. We'll go ahead and launch Adapt Builder. This will be included in the 2019 release of Adapt Builder. We have a RC moment frame that we're going to open. Notice we have Edge along with Floor Pro. Edge allows us to actually analyze the multi-story frame. We'll just take a quick navigation and view of this frame here. We have several floors. This particular frame includes both uh, traditional and also first order and second order combinations for P Delta. If we go to loading, load combinations, we can see the combinations that have been um, set up. We have just the seismic X, seismic, um, the seismic X positive and negative. Also, um, the traditional seismic X positive and negative, including some gravity loads. This is the first order. And then we have a combination which sets the, um, the need to generate the, the geometric stiffness matrix. And then we have additional P delta combinations or second order for the same seismic X positive and negative. We're going to go ahead and delete this combo. This is a gravity only combination. We'll also delete this um, gravity service combo. So we'll go ahead now and run this. Um, we we want to make sure we do have combinations actually set to service to check drift. So we're going to change these from strength. We'll just call them service total, and that will trigger the graphical drift check in the program. So we'll go ahead now and uh, run the model. I'm going to go to analysis. This model has already been meshed and we're going to go ahead and execute the analysis for the full set of combos. Now the results that we're going to obtain are direct analytical results. In other words, they do not include any uh, deflection amplification necessary for a particular seismic um, design category. So that would have to be embedded in the allowable percentage of interstory drift that the user enters. Um, once this is completed, I'm going to go over to, um, to the results browser here. And under the loading tab, I'm going to just select one of the service combos. We'll do service X positive, for example, or seismic X positive. And from analysis, columns, we can go ahead and check the drift. So graphically, we can check this drift. This will show up here. This can also be done for walls if you had a shear wall structure. Um, the same type of graphical check could be done for both columns and walls. And the acceptable um, uh, limit here is set to 0.5%. That's actually shown here under display. The user can set the drift maximum allowable here. And there is a uh, description of what that means down at the bottom. This again would require the user to embed the amplification factor within this. So your allowable in essence would be reduced um, by doing that. So graphically we can check these um, these interstory drifts and whether or not they meet the uh, allowable here. The new feature is actually under the reports tab. So if we go to the reports tab under analysis data we can see at the bottom here we have this XLS reports. This is the drift report. If we open the drift report, there's a dialog that will open. The user can here, here we, the user can actually select any combination to report the drifts for. And graphically, we have to graphically check against service combinations. That's why we tagged two of the combinations of service. But here we can actually select any combo. So we're going to select just uh, one of these combinations or a couple of them. We'll select the same ones that are actually graphically shown on screen. We can select the combinations. We can uh, select which directions we want to report for drift, X, Y, or combined. The allowable drift input is shown here. So for this to correlate with the graphical input, I'll change this to 0 0.005. The input here is a percentage. This is just a direct um, number. So we need to make sure we have the right correlation there. And then the locations where we want the story drift to, to be produced in terms of the graphic or the, the tabular check will be uh, center of mass, column locations, that would be the column nodes, 
and also the average drift of columns. That would be all columns, let's say, in a in a story. So once we've um, set up and selected our different options here in this dialog, we'll select OK. This Excel uh, file is saved at this path location. We'll select Yes. And now we get um, the XLS file that opens. So the way this is structured is we have different stations vertically throughout the structure. We have, for example, uh, plane 20. This is top down. So if we scroll down, you see the the planes are um, descending as we move down this uh, spreadsheet. The program also will note the level and the column ID. So this is column ID 289 at level 19. If I go back into my model, and let's just go ahead and navigate to the top plane, I can always turn on the column labels. So um, going to visibility, view settings, we can go into column and we can turn on the ID or the label. I'll just turn on the ID here. Let's go to a plan view. And this is column 289. So this is a way to, to refer and, and uh, tie the actual column location back to the report. We have the coordinates of the column, X, Y, and Z, and also the story height for that particular plane. We also have a tab for displacements. So for each column location, uh, for the selected combinations, seismic X positive and negative, the type of combination, service, no code check, strength. Here we have the values for displacements, X top and X bottom. These values are actually in millimeters. This needs to be converted back to inches, and that's part of um, some of the work we're doing with, um, with the new release. And then we have uh, X top, X bottom y top, y bottom, and then combined. So these are the actual displacements relative to the selections made in the um, in the dialog that we just saw for drift reporting. Okay, so um, you'll also note there's some empty columns here. This is actually second to first order ratio um, of, of drift. So this second over first, this is just more of an amplification factor based on the drifts between first and second order analyses. This is empty because we did not report drifts for the P-delta case. Uh, oh, going over here to, to drift, this actually shows a similar, um, let's say, format to displacements, just in terms of, of the drift. Again, we have the planes, the columns, the load case, type of load case, the drift X and Y, and the percentage inner story drift in independent directions and also combined and whether that meets the allowable. Again, these require um, some conversion back to the proper unit system for the um, uh, for the release of this actual product. This is kind of an interim build of the product that we're showing just to show uh, our users here what, what it is we're working on. So we have drift envelope. This shows governing load combinations both for X and Y um, and then drift X, drift Y, combine and allowable. So this is more uh, of what governs in either direction or combined for a given set of data that you select in the input window. Average drifts, drift envelope for the average setting, and then center of mass drifts. So this gives you the center of mass for each combination at each level, drift X, Y, combine, and again, compare it against the allowable along with the envelope. So the envelope would just you know, dictate which particular combination in a set of combinations that you have selected governs that particular um, setting for the type of drift that you're reporting or have selected to report. Anyway, this is a new feature coming up in version 2019. If you have any questions, please let us know. You can contact us at support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.